How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe. Now I'm sure that anyone who knows anything about computers knows what RAM is. It's a core component of the computer. And if you go to ever build a computer or upgrade one, you might be thinking about things like how much RAM to get, how many gigabytes of it, the frequency, the latency, which not a lot of people think about, but you should, and that sort of thing. But there is another type of memory that a lot of people have never heard of or don't really know what it is and that is error correcting memory, or more specifically, error correcting code memory, or ECC. And this has a lot of pretty specific purposes, but not everyone really needs it. So I'm gonna go over what it's for, how it works, and whether you might wanna consider it in your next PC build. In most cases, the only place you'll really see error correcting memory is on things like servers or things that have mission critical processes running on them, such as scientific calculations, or maybe financial data, just stuff that if that computer were to crash, it would cause huge problems, like a company would stop being able to operate, it would just be a disaster. So that's where error correcting memory comes in. It basically helps that computer fix any errors in the memory that would cause it to crash and fixes them. On the other hand, this isn't really common on consumer computers like the one you have, because even if your computer crashes, you know, it's not like you're gonna lose millions of dollars because you're a whole company running on that one computer. And even if you're running a Word document, you know, Word has recovery files that it keeps, stuff like that. You just reboot the computer and continue things. It's not like if that computer were to shut down, you would have, you know, it would ruin your life. So to understand how error correcting memory works, I'll try to give a pretty easy explanation first of how general memory works so you can understand what's going on. And it's really not that difficult. So you can think of RAM as having a bunch of different spots where you can put data, and there's a finite number of these, and you'll call them cells. And typically you might see about eight bits in each cell, which is one byte. So you have one byte of data, and that typically is what one character on a keyboard is. Every letter is one byte, which is eight bits. So in every cell, you're gonna have eight ones or zeros, which represents one tiny byte of data, and there's a whole bunch of these cells, and you can store memory in any of them. However, every once in a while, something is gonna happen called a flipped bit, where one of the bits in one of the cells will just spontaneously flip from a one or to a zero, or a zero to a one. And that's just because perhaps the electrical signal was somehow disrupted in that cell in the circuit, and it just now thinks that it's a different number. If this happens, if that particular bit or cell was very important to what was ever going on in the computer at that point, it can cause some major issues or perhaps nothing, but it could cause a system crash completely, or it could corrupt data that's being written onto the computer, both of which in certain situations could be disastrous. Now, there are plenty of different possibilities for what could cause a flipped bit, you never really know. And there are, for example, hard errors, which are physical conditions such as a higher temperature, temperature fluctuations, or perhaps physically moving and bending the stick of RAM could disrupt things. And there are also a group called soft errors, which are mostly having to do with electrical interferences. And the most common of these are literally caused by cosmic background radiation from outside the Earth. So a fun fact is that if you are at a higher elevation, then your computer memory is more prone to getting these errors these flipped bits because there are more literally neutrons coming in and other radiation coming in that could bombard that RAM and flip it over. So another fun fact is that's why a lot of aircraft or spacecraft or even high altitude observatories and things definitely need to have that error correcting RAM because it might be at more risk of getting radiation to disrupt that RAM. So here's a quick example of what a flipped bit might look like. In this case, it's not gonna cause a computer crash, but say you're in Microsoft Excel and you're typing in numbers and you wanna type in the number eight. So when you hit that key, the computer now is going to store that letter eight in a cell and that's gonna be 00111000 and that's what you see on the screen. But at some point, maybe right before you save the file or as you're saving the file, that last bit gets flipped. So the last zero turns into a one and now it's 00111001 
which is the number nine. So it gets saved as the number nine. Now, even though this happened, you might not even notice it because it's still a valid number that would be typed into an Excel. You could have easily just pressed nine as opposed to eight, the computer doesn't care, but it will be wrong. So that would be an example where there's a flipped bit and you wouldn't even notice. There are other cases where, I don't know, you're browsing the web and one letter on the page gets changed. Obviously you would not even notice that or care. It's completely uh, no consequence. But again, if you're running finances or something and you tell the computer not to trade a stock and it flips and it does trade the stock, yeah, you don't want that at all. So what we have with this error correcting memory is the ability to detect and fix a single bit error. Now, if there's multiple errors simultaneously, you probably have bigger issues, but that's very unlikely. But what happens is instead of just having those eight bits, it's going to add in a little bit extra information called a parity bit or redundant bit, which is used to make sure that the other bits are what they should be. So what this specifically looks like is in this string of ones and zeros in the cell, the last extra parity bit will be added on and it will be a one or a zero depending on how many ones are in that cell. So for example, if there's an odd number of ones, then it will be a one in the parity bit. And if it's an even number of ones, it'll be a zero in the parity bit. So if one of those turns into a flipped bit, then it will no longer be the same even or odd number as the parity bit thinks, and it will detect, okay, there's a mismatch here, something happened, it's not right. So a lot of you might spot that, wait a minute, so yeah, we can detect that an error happened, but there's no way you can really fix it at this point with just one parity bit, because you don't even know which bit got switched. So what happens is there are more parity bits added on. So with that, and a little bit of math that I'm not gonna get into, basically these extra parity bits are then used to compare multiple bits. So maybe it'll uh, be comparing the first and second bit and another parity bit will be the second and third and so on. And just using some mathematical equations, if one happens to switch based on all the parity bits and all the bits you know, it can figure out which bit it was and just flip it back. So yeah, I know that didn't really explain how exactly it works, but it's too complicated for me to explain reliably. So just know that there are extra parity bits that store backup data, you can think of it, that can be used to calculate the correct data again. So this all sounds great. I mean, sign me up. I want some of that error correcting RAM, right? Well, not necessarily, because you might not need it, first of all, like I mentioned before, on a desktop. And yeah, you could get a special motherboard that supports it, but you have to consider that it also is a lot more expensive because there's not much, so much demand for it, especially in the consumer space. And they are really purpose built for enterprise, which tends to have a lot more money anyway. So you're gonna have to pay up first of all, if you want some of that error correcting RAM. So if you don't need it, it's not necessary. And also you wanna know that there is a very slight performance hit because it has to do all that extra calculation every time to figure out if everything is correct before actually finalizing it. And it's not a big hit. Apparently I've heard a figure that it's about 2% less, but I mean, if you're paying a lot more money for a certain type of RAM and it's a little bit less performance, then that might not be something that most people want. Another thing to note is you can't actually combine ECC memory and non-ECC memory in the same computer. You have to use one or the other, assuming that it does even support ECC. And also kind of another fun fact, if you ever need to know whether a particular stick of RAM is ECC or not, you can tell by just looking at it based on the number of memory modules or the black chips on there. And with regular RAM, you're gonna see really either four or eight chips. A lot of times if it's like laptop memory, it'll be four. And so that's gonna be regular RAM, but a ECC RAM stick is gonna have an extra module for the parity. So instead of having four, it'll have five. 
and instead of having eight, it'll have nine or possibly more. So if it's four or eight, it's gonna be regular RAM. If it's five, nine or more, it's probably ECC. And if you do happen to have a motherboard that does support ECC memory, in most cases, it might also support regular non-ECC memory, but at that point, it would kind of defeat the purpose. You're spending more on a motherboard, probably a workstation motherboard. You may as well put that ECC in there. Now, hold on, because even though we just talked about error correcting RAM versus non-error correcting RAM, there are actually multiple types of error correcting RAM. It's not all just one type. So the two main categories we can talk about are registered or buffered memory, as well as unbuffered, or it might be called unregistered somewhere. I've never seen it called that, but if you do, that's what it is. And unbuffered memory is the majority of the type of RAM you'd see. And also non-error correcting RAM is typically all unbuffered as well. So with buffered memory, like the name suggests, or registered, there is an extra chip on there on the card that's either called a register or a buffer, makes sense. And this will sit between the RAM and the rest of the computer, like the CPU. And the purpose of this is it would allow you, if you wanted, to use a lot of RAM, like large amounts of RAM that is more than you would ever put in like a home workstation or even maybe a typical server. So the reason for that is with so many chips of RAM, that's gonna cause a higher electrical load on the computer than normal, and specifically the memory controller that's gonna be talking to the CPU. So it uses a dedicated purpose-built chip on the RAM to kind of offload all that electrical charge and handle that before it goes to the rest of the computer and allows it to just work more efficiently. But again, unless you're using like a ton of RAM, that's almost never gonna be really necessary. And most of the RAM you're gonna see is unbuffered, including both error correcting and non-error correcting memory. And in that case, there is no just, there's no buffer chip at all. It just goes right into the rest of the computer from the RAM. And that's also going to mean slightly better performance because with the buffer, it has to buffer at least one clock cycle. So it might be very minusculely slower than unbuffered RAM in some cases. Of course, that's gonna depend on what you're comparing it to. If it's a very, very fast unbuffered RAM, might be about the same. It's just to be aware of, it's probably in most situations best to just use unbuffered RAM, which is probably what you have anyway. So finally, I guess we can go over different situations where you might be someone who needs error, error correcting RAM, or maybe you don't, because really your situation is the key determinant here. For anyone who's just a regular computer user, there's no real special uses you're using it for, and you've never even heard of error correcting memory, and you've been fine without it, especially like with things like gaming, yeah, you don't need error correcting memory, it would be unnecessary, it would be more expensive, and might even give a performance hit for what you're using it for. Next, if you have, say, a home server that you built that doesn't do anything mission critical, nothing super important, like maybe a home theater PC where it just kind of stores and plays media on your TV, again, that's not something that it would really be a disaster if the computer crashed. So again, I wouldn't really put error, cor error correcting memory in that thing. Now, say you use your computer professionally. It's like a high powered workstation and you do, I don't know, video editing or 3D rendering that's like heavy hitter stuff. And maybe you need that computer to be rendering for 24 hours straight. It's like a Hollywood movie or something. Then in that case, it might be worth it to invest in error correcting RAM and you would need to get a special motherboard with that also. But that would be because I don't know, maybe your computer's prone to crashing, and if you're halfway through a 24 hour render and it crashes, you have to start the whole thing over again because of flipped bit, then it would be much more worth it to save the time, and there's the time value of money that would make up for it from saving all that time from the reduces in crashes. Now, another situation you might consider is if you have an NAS server, a network attached storage, so a bunch of hard drives, and you put all your data on there. And I would say in that case, it's also probably not necessary in most cases to get error correcting RAM because in that situation, you would hopefully have parity drives anyway. You would use like RAID 5 or RAID 6. So if there is an issue with the drive, then that would be able to fix it. On the other hand, if you are using your NAS to store really important stuff that's like irreplaceable, I don't know, family photos or something, then I don't know. It, personally, I would think it would be worth it to get an NAS that supports error correcting memory 
just to be on the safe side and depending on the file system, it might be better to have error correcting memory, but that's another story. But I guess I would say if you do have stuff that is that important, you should probably be backing it up online as well. So it wouldn't be necessary unless you, I don't know, for some reason, only store it locally, which is not a good idea in the first place. And finally, the other situation that we've mentioned before is if you run a business or you have an important server that, I don't know, runs a customer facing website that you want it to be up all the time, obviously, or if you have a server where if it goes down, none of your employees can do any work. Yeah, in that case, error correcting memory on your server is a must have the amount of money you would lose from having your computer down for a day will be a lot more than the extra couple hundred dollars you would spend on error correcting memory. So basically, I guess I'll say in conclusion, most people probably don't need error correcting memory, and that's why most people haven't heard of it. But the next time you're building a computer, I don't know, maybe you wanna go all out and you are gonna be using it relatively professionally and you want that extra reliability, now you'll know whether you need to get it based on your situation. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those and also let us know what you think down in the comments. If you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, should be worth it. And also consider enabling notifications by clicking the bell next to the subscribe button. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.